Welcome to the Cambridge Financial Podcast with Bert Salazar, CEO at Cambridge Financial Partners, LLC. This podcast is all about tax-preferred retirement planning, economics, financial risk management, and achieving a risk-free and successful financial life. Now, your host, Bert Salazar. Bert Salazar. Bert Salazar. Hey, good day, everyone. Welcome to the Bert Salazar Retirement Show. My name is Bert Salazar, and I am going to be your host today, as I am every single week. And this is episode 146 of um, the Bert Salazar Retirement Show. And uh, the title for this episode is, What Do You Really Know About Retirement? And uh, by the way, this is a question that I always, um, number one, I always ask myself that question. And number two, on a weekly basis, I have a number of clients that, um, or potential clients that reach out to me, part of my online community, uh, referrals from my existing clients, and they come in to see me or we get on a video conference, which is more than likely the way that everything that, uh, that most of us are doing it today because of the COVID-19 situation and so forth. But, you know, whenever I ask a client, you know, what are they doing for retirement, uh, the vast majority of them tell me that, you know, Bert, we're pretty good. We've been saving for a lot of years, so I think we're going to have more than enough money for retirement, and we're going to be retiring in the next two to three years, so I think we're ready to go, but we do so, we do have a number of questions that we want to run by you and get some feedback from you and so forth. And, um, you know, that's why I decided to do this, because when we start getting into those conversations, uh, the first thing that I realize is that the vast majority of these clients have no clue what's going to be ahead of them or, or ahead uh, for them when it comes to, to retirement. So I decided to title this episode, uh, What Do You Really Know About Retirement? Because more than likely, uh, not very much. And, um, and I'm going to give you some of the reasons why. And please don't take this personal because I've never been accused of sugarcoating anything in my life uh, because at the end of the day, it is what it is. In the same way that if you go to your doctor and you're sick, uh, you don't want your doctor to be sugarcoating anything on your behalf. You want the doctor to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and then your options as to how to move forward and how to get better yourself and, and so forth. Well, the same thing happens because I happen to be a financial doctor. And because I specialize in retirement distribution planning and tax planning, I have pretty much uh, seen it all. So I'm going to give you some things that you're probably not going to be happy about. But at the end of the day, it is what it is because that's what I get paid for. That's what my clients pay me for. You know, they don't pay me for sugarcoating anything for them because at the end of the day, I have a due diligence and, um, and a responsibility to them. Uh, to their business and also to their families along those lines. Now, why is it that more than likely you don't know very much about retirement? Well, uh, because at the end of the day, you think you know it all. And this is something that happens often because whenever somebody reaches out to me, uh, they come in with the uh, the attitude or they, they get on the phone call or the video conference with the attitude that they know it all. And once I start plugging uh, holes in in their retirement plan, then all of a sudden they have to start thinking again. Because my job is to get them to to think outside of the box because that's a way that you need to think when it comes to your retirement planning and your retirement life. So because of the fact that you think you know it all, then more than likely you're not going to pay enough attention and you're you're not going to do enough uh, due diligence or research as to how to really... Uh, maximize your retirement life. Uh, the other reason is, uh, well, you've never had to go through it. You see, um, in my case, I have had to go through it over 70 times. And the reason for that is I have probably anywhere between 70 and 80 clients out of my 240 some odd clients that I have in my book of business that are already retired. And they all retire with me. So that means that I, every time one of my clients retires, I have to retire through them or with them because I have to be able to hold them and their assets by the hand uh, to get them to the promised land. So because you've never had to go through it, uh, you don't know what it's like. You don't know what it feels like. You don't know uh, what the booby traps are going to be down the line uh, once you um, emerge uh, out of your 
uh, working life and you move into your retirement life. Now, another reason is that you've never had to think through it. See, you think that retirement is very simple. You know, you put money away in your retirement accounts. Uh, you work like crazy for 30, 40, 45, maybe even 50 years for some of you. And then you're going to read the, you're going to reach uh, the summit of retirement. Uh, usually it's about age 65. And then whatever you have is going to carry you all the way through the day you die. And that's as simple as most of you actually make it to be, but it's a lot more complex than that. Because reaching your retirement summit, I would argue, is the easy part. Getting through your retirement life is a different ball game altogether. So uh, because of the fact that you've never really had to think through it, uh, you really haven't uh, done your due diligence along those lines. Now, the other thing is that I see this quite often, and this doesn't mean that you're dumb or stupid or you're you're an imbecile or anything like that it has nothing to do with that it just has to do with you know you may be you, you may be very good and very knowledgeable at the kind of job that you do you know whether you happen to be an architect or if you happen to be an accountant you have to you happen to be a stockbroker you happen to be an attorney uh, you happen to be a plumber or an el uh, electrician or whatever so you know your job very well and you know it uh, better than most but when you think that you can apply that knowledge in your job to your retirement life, um, all of a sudden you find yourself in international waters on a dinghy with no paddles. And uh, by the time you get to the shore, if you actually make it there, you're going to realize uh, that only when the tide goes down will you know who is swimming naked. And you're going to be totally naked in that beach, and everybody's going to be looking at you because you, know, you are doomed from a retirement standpoint. Um, and the reason is that you have minimum and or no knowledge whatsoever of economics. Now, you have no knowledge of the economic impact that a premature death may have on retirement, so uh, you never factor that in. You, don't, you think you're going to live forever, or at least you're going to live for 25 to 30 years in retirement. But you fail to realize that tomorrow's promise to no one. And if you don't wake up tomorrow morning, uh, what is going to be the financial impact to your surviving uh, spouse and your family when it comes to uh, retirement assets? You also have no knowledge of, econo of what the economic impact that a prolonged and or a long-term care illness may have on retirement. You have no clue. You know, I have over 70 clients, as I stated earlier, in retirement right now. I have about 12 of them that are now in either assisted living facilities, nursing homes, or having some uh, critical and acute uh, health care issues that more than likely are going to land them in a long-term care facility in the not-too-distant future. And you have no clue what the, the cost of that is. And that's a very important and very sad because most of you, as you plan for retirement, you don't even think about those, issue, those issues. They don't come into mind. Uh, and that's, and that's, uh, that's a shame. Uh, shame on you for not thinking through that or uh, having a financial advisor that will be able to walk you through that and help you protect against the risk of living with a disability. Now, another thing is that you have no knowledge of the economic impact that stock market volatility, interest rate volatility, taxes, inflation, financial fees, that are assessed to your retirement accounts. You have no knowledge of the economic impact that all of those things have on your retirement life. And then you come into my office or you get me on a video conference and you say, you say to me, yeah, but you know what? I, I think I'm okay. You know, we're going to have, you know, half a million dollars, uh, three quarters of a million dollars. We're going to have a million dollars. My wife and I are going to be just fine in retirement. You have no clue. You have no clue whatsoever. You don't even know the fact that most of the money that you're going to need in retirement you haven't earned yet. So that's something that you need to be able to pay attention to. Now, um, what else? Um, you have spent the majority of your life planning and or thinking about retirement accumulation, but only about five minutes thinking about retirement distribution. And it's a different ball game altogether. See, the rules of engagement totally change when you go from the accumulation of assets to the distribution of assets. And like I said, most of you have spent many, many years of your life thinking about retirement and accumulation, 
but only about five minutes, and, and I'm being very conservative in this number, thinking about distribution. The vast majority of you haven't even given it a second thought uh, to the issues and the concerns with retirement distribution planning. So that's important. The other thing is that, you know, you don't know the difference between accumulation and distribution rates and how they apply to each other. You have no knowledge how annuities can actually solve the vast majority of problems in your retirement life. And yet, I get people often, well, you know, often tell me, Bert, uh, you know what, I'm not interested in buying annuities. Well, all of you should, because our annuities are going to help you guarantee your retirement life. And only a fool would want to live in retirement without guarantees. Because if I were to ask anyone who has some common sense, what percentage of their retirement assets would they have to would they like would they like to have guaranteed in retirement? I can bet you that if you have common sense, which is by the way the least common of all senses, all of you are going to say a hundred percent. Yet most of you barely have ten to fifteen percent of your retirement assets uh, in a guaranteed bucket, and that's once again shame on you for that. See, the other thing is that many of you, and this I said earlier. Many of you think you have saved more than enough for retirement. Yet, and let me repeat this, many of you think that you have saved more than enough for retirement, yet you have no idea how long you're going to live or your spouse, what kind of lifestyle you're going to have, how much your retirement accounts will earn in the future, what your health and or quality of life will be for you and your life partner. So, you know, that's where uh, disability and long-term care comes into play. You have no clue how many market crashes your retirement assets will have to deal with in the future. You have no clue what percentage of your retirement accounts actually belong to the IRS. See, you look at that million-dollar portfolio and you think, I have a million dollars in my retirement accounts. No, you don't. You have no clue what you have in your retirement accounts because a large portion of that is going to belong to the IRS and the IRS is going to dictate when they want their money and what percentage of that account they want on their side and not on yours. So how can you tell me you know what you have for retirement? And that's something that I want to leave you thinking about because that's very, very important. You have no clue what inflation will be throughout your retirement life? How many wars will the U.S. get into? You know, will there be a depression in the future or a recession or several recessions? But, and and, and those are just a few of the issues that all of you should be worried about, but very of you, very few of you actually have thought through because you don't have a clue and you don't really know anything about retirement. But yet, and that's and this is important, yet, uh, and somehow, you have a crystal ball telling you that you have enough for retirement. Now, how absurd is that? Because if you really start thinking about your retirement life, and you take a look at the value of your assets, in the year that you expect to retire, and you start thinking about your retirement life, and what kind of life do you want to have? I mean, if you want to live in a shack for the rest of your life, okay, perhaps maybe half a million dollars will get you there. But if you have, if you want to have the retirement life that you should have after working so many years to put money aside, then you're going to need a lot more than half a million dollars when it comes to your retirement life. But I would argue you're going to need a lot more than a million dollars. Now, how many of you have a million dollars right now in your retirement accounts? I would argue very few of you. But yet, you get on a video conference with me or a conference call, or you come into my office and you tell me and you think that you're pretty set for retirement. And you're failing to realize all of these issues and concerns that are going to be very critical, not only for you, but also for your family. Because remember, you don't get to do this a second time. You only get one shot at this. That's it. And this is it. 
So that's important to note. As a matter of fact, let me just give you one example, and I'm going to do a webinar on this, and I'll invite you all to this. But let me give you one example on just one of the topics that I mentioned a little while ago. Let's talk about financial fees. You know, most of you are investing your retirement assets in you know, mutual funds, or you may have some stocks and bonds and so forth, but the vast majority of the clients that I engage for the first time have all of their assets in retirement accounts, you know, pre-tax. That means the money goes in goes in pre-tax and money grows tax deferred, but then you have to pay taxes on all the money when it comes out. And then you have them all in mutual fund accounts. And by the way, the average uh, mutual fund company is actually charging anywhere between one and a half to two percent, you know, when you factor all the fees inside of, mu of your mutual fund accounts. So let's say, and I'm just taking, I'm just using an example of someone who's age 65 and they have a million dollars in their retirement account, which is a number that most Americans feel that, oh, that's going to be more than enough for me to make it through retirement. It's not going to be. Uh, enough, but most of you think it will be enough. And let's say that you don't touch that money because you have other sources, you have a pension, or both you and your, have, your wife has, have pensions, and you also have Social Security benefits, and the only time you're going to touch any of these accounts is when you have mandatory requirement distributions starting at age 72 for the vast majority of you. So you're basically not touching this account. So I'm going to take a million dollars. And by the way, I can do the same math if you happen to be 40 years old and you want to get to age 65. And what I'm trying to educate you on here is that, you know, there is a, there is a true difference in understanding the impact of financial fees inside of your retirement accounts. So for instance, a million dollars growing at a 5% annually linear and we all know that the market doesn't work that doesn't work that way, because the market has a crash normally every five years, and the crash is about 39 percent on the average. But let's say that you're able, you get into a 30-year period where uh, the market never suffers uh, any losses, and you're gaining you're gaining five percent every year. Because by the way, most Americans, when they factor in all of the internal rate of returns in their retirement accounts. They're actually earning anywhere between three and a half and four and a half percent. So most Americans are not earning five percent, but I'm going to give you that benefit of the doubt. So a million dollars growing at five percent over a 30 year period will get you to four million three hundred and twenty one thousand nine hundred and forty two dollars compounded. So that 5% compounding on a million dollars every single year, no losses over a 30-year period, now you have an account value of $4,321,942, okay? And that's an account that has zero financial fees attached to it. So let me just do a simple calculation, and instead of using the 1.5% or the 2% that most retirement accounts are paying today in fees, let's just take a simple 1% fee across the board. Well, that million dollars that without fees in 30 years was going to net you $4,321,942 that million now with a 1% fee is going to give you a net of $3,196,942 as opposed to the $4.3 million in change. So where did that money go? Well, that money went to financial fees. Because remember, in your retirement accounts or in your investment accounts, whether they're qualified or non-qualified, it doesn't matter whether you make money, lose money, or break even. The financial institution, they're always going to be collecting their 1%, their 1.5%, their or their 2%. So in this case, you say, well, if I lost all that money in financial fees, what does that represent in my retirement account? Well, all that money that you lost in financial fees represent a reduction 
of 26% of your retirement assets. So now you're going to say, well, Bert, how can 1% equal 26%? Well, because remember, the 1% is um, uh, charged on every dollar in that account over a 30-year period. So when you add every single fee every year, so let's say uh, in the first year you had on the million dollars, you had a fee of 10500 with a growth, same thing in the second year, 11000 uh, 345 in the third year, 11,794 in the fourth year, and so forth. By the time you get uh, to year 30, all of those fees, when you divide it by the account value, will represent 26% of that account value that has been totally lost to financial fees. So a 1% fee, where most of you don't even pay attention to, you say, well, that's just 1%, who cares? Well, that 1% uh, can have a negative impact of more than a quarter of all of your your retirement assets at the point in time of retirement. So uh, those are things that none of you ever think about when it comes to your retirement distribution planning. None of you think about... You know, it doesn't matter whether Fidelity, Fidelity has a bunch of fees internally, and and by the way, and same as uh, every other company, how do you think they make money? Do you think that they don't make money on your money? And the reason why you don't see that 1% fee is that when you get your statements on, on a monthly basis and then you get your annual statement, you'll see your account value, but what you don't see is what your account value would have been at or would have earned had there not been an internal fee on it. And this is what I try to educate all of my clients on because at the end of the day, the impact of what's truly unseen is much, much higher than what you can actually see on the outside. So um, hopefully I, I've given you some good information and hopefully now you are gonna start paying a little bit uh, more attention to your retirement and your retirement planning. Uh, once again, for those of you that want to get a hold of me and pick my brain, uh, feel free to reach uh, to do so. You can reach me at area code 786 766 1042. You can also send me an email at bert, B E R T, at bertsalazar.com, B E R T S A L A Z A R.com. And always, always remember that my goal and that of my firm uh, for you and your family is to kind of help you uh, change the way that you see things because when you change the way that you see things, the things that you see change. So once again, uh, be good, be safe, take care of yourselves and your family, and I'll talk to you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.